Hi, it's Mr. Adams from Midway High School. This is a video on ideal versus real gases. Um, ideal gases have no attraction or volume to them, but real gases do. Now, ideal gases, like its name says, is just an idealistic situation. It's a model, okay, so they don't actually exist. It's considered that the particles, right, are so far away from each other that you can actually um, ignore their volumes, okay? So that's why they have um, no attraction or no volume, but we know that gas particles actually do have attraction because we're able to make liquid nitrogen from nitrogen gas, for example. Okay, um, the collisions of ideal gases are perfectly elastic in relation to energy. Now, what does that mean? If, for example, these two um, pool balls right here, right, were imagine them to be um, ideal gas um, particles, when one smacks into the other, right. The energy transfer will perfectly transfer from this um, number five ball to the number eight ball, right? Perfectly. Um, but we know from experience, right, that when two things collide like that, um, there's sound um, given off in terms of energy, there's heat given off, there's friction, and so on. So once again, this is another idealized concept, all right? So the lack of attraction, um, no volume, and perfectly elastic collisions are um, idealistic and just for real, just for ideal gases. Real gases have those, though, okay? Um, ideal gases move in random straight lines, okay? So they move in randomly in different directions, but it will always be in a straight line. So once again, ideal gases, ideal, okay, perfect gases, no attraction, and we can negligible volume, and the collisions in terms of energy are perfectly elastic, uh, perfectly energy transfer. All right, and random straight lines. All right, so we're moving on. Now, typically what they tend to ask, right, is um, what gases, which gases, which real gases that we know from um, will behave most like a ideal gas, okay? And if you realize, right, that um, ideal gases basically have no volume, right? So, okay, you can think, imagine there's teeny tiny pinpoints, right? Then you can assume that the real gases would have to be very what? They would have to be very, very small, right? So the real gases that we know that are very, 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 very small are, okay, hydrogen and helium, right? So those two guys would behave most like, okay, an ideal gas. Okay, these are the real gases right here, hydrogen and helium, okay? But those two guys would behave most like an ideal gas. Now, under what conditions? All right. Now, if you look at this balloon over here, right, we see that when it's cooled down, right, in this ice bath, okay, it shrinks. But ideally, right, gas, the ideal gas particles are very, very far apart, right? So in terms of getting them more far apart, you want your temperature to be what? You want your temperature to be high, okay, because the high particles give more average kinetic energy and would cause them to spread out even more. All right, now once again, looking at the balloon analogy, right? If you squeeze the balloon, the particles will get closer. Okay, that's increased pressure. So in terms of pressure, right, and wanting real gases to behave ideally, you want the lower pressure. Okay, so high temperature, lower pressure, right, will cause real gases to behave more like ideal gases. Okay, um, it's a nice simple topic. These are most of the properties of um, ideal gases right here. Okay, once again, no attraction, no volume, uh, perfectly elastic uh, collisions in terms of energy, and uh, random straight lines. Um, once again, real gases have attraction, real gases have volume, and this statement in green is not exactly true for um, real gases because there's sound, friction, and other considerations in terms of energy transfer. All right, guys, as always, hard work, but sacrifice equals success. Hope this video was a help. Take care.